Case. 63-year-old male with type 2 diabetes, A1C of 12%, comes into the ER with nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. He's on multiple diabetes medications. He developed these symptoms after having a severe URI. He has not been able to eat food, and liquid is hard to tolerate, but he is still taking all of his diabetes meds. Anion gap is 18, glucose is 102, pH on an ABG is 7.15. Which medication is most likely to be responsible for his issue? So I'll give you 20 seconds to commit to an answer. All right. The answer here is empagliflozin. So we're going to be talking about euglycemic uh, DKA from SGLT2 inhibitors. But to talk about that, we have to go over what the heck um, DKA is in the first place. So when you have a severe glucagon insulin mismatch, you get ketosis, and that's what leads to DKA. Um, DKA is truly when you have absolute insulin deficiency. So, you know, it's like 10,000 glucagon to one of insulin, if you will. In a euglycemic DKA, something is preventing the serum glucose from rising. And so in this case, it's the SGLT2 inhibitor. So let's go over what the heck an SGLT2 inhibitor is. Uh, this time of year, you probably all have seen it prescribed in at least one patient. This is all the rage. This is the procalcitonin of medications now. Everyone's using it. It's used in diabetes, heart failure, and probably a lot more things in the future. Uh, you know, this would not be complete without the picture of a nephron and a basal lateral and apical membrane. So SGLT2s uh, is a co-transporter for sodium and glucose. So if you block that, sodium gets dumped into the tubule here and so does glucose. So you start to urinate glucose. The thing is when you dump out glucose, it has a few consequences. So the first thing is it lowers your serum glucose. So if you end up in DKA and your sugar is high, this can counteract that. It also decreases your insulin release because you are not hyperglycemic. Um, so what they're actually doing is they're inducing insulinopenia, which is a good thing generally. But when you think about things that you have to balance this with what triggers excessive glucagon release, because if you have too much glucagon and not enough insulin, you can end up in DKA. So a higher urine output from glucosuria can lead to intravascular depletion as well. So you can become volume down. And you really should avoid this, in, this, this medication in patients with really bad oral intake or if you anticipate poor oral intake. So the one that comes up a lot for everyone is preoperatively, what do you do? And so a lot of the recommendations say to let SGLT2 inhibitors wash out of the system before surgery. And so the classic teaching for most meds washing out is four to five half-lives. In this particular case, four to five half-lives for most SGLT2 inhibitors is about three days. The literature isn't really sorted out yet. So conservatively, people say three to seven days. So I think if you pick some, anywhere between three and seven days to hold the SGLT2 inhibitor, you will be okay. So to review everything, it's quite a bit. Uh, remember that SGLT2 inhibitors promote glucosuria by inhibiting the sodium glucose co-transporter in the nephron, and that they should be stopped preoperatively to avoid euglycemic DKA, so anywhere from three to seven days. Finally, you should consider stopping them if your patient is NPO. And so here's a little uh, flow chart that I made that kind of describes the process here. So if you have an SGLT2 inhibitor uh, being given, you get glucosuria, and so that lowers your serum glucose. If you're NPO, that further causes a reduction in your serum glucose. What does all of this do? It decreases your insulin release. Now, if you have a stressor such as a critical illness or surgery, that increases your glucagon, and that triggers this massive glucagon insulin imbalance when that happens, you get ketosis, and now you get euglycemic DKA. That's all I've got. What questions do you all have? Alrighty. Um, be wary of prank pages today. Have a nice weekend, everybody. I think there's a question in the chat. Oh, there is. Oh, management. So you have to stop the uh, SGLT2 inhibitor and you treat it as if those decay. So you close the gap, you do everything the same way.
because the issue is that you lack insulin. Not too sweet, otherwise it gets, gets a little hairy. All right, thanks everybody.